Welcome to the He's Got Issues Independent Comics Edition number 4. I'm John Cooney here to preview new independent comics being released March 13th, 2013. Beginning alphabetically with Boom Studios and Aliens vs. Parker number 1 of 4. Set in the not-so-distant future, a group of SpaceX employees spend their days doing what they always do, getting sent all over the universe to mindlessly load and unload cargo bays. In the hierarchy of cool space jobs, these guys are on the bottom rung. Their only relief is playing Warfighter, a massive multiplayer online game against punk-ass children from back home, and seeing if there's anything good to eat in the mess hall. That is, until they have to deliver a package marked classified to a planet more dangerous than they've ever faced before. The ragtag team of slackers, malcontents, and gamers have to put all their skills, or lack thereof, to good use simply to stay alive. We've got Bravest Warriors number 6 of 6. Based on the hit series from Adventure Time creator Pendleton Ward, the Bravest Warriors are deep undercover in an alien beauty pageant, but none of them are winning Miss Congeniality. We've got Garfield number 11. Pet Force teams up with Fred Hembeck? Yes, fans, we're returning to Planet Polyester for another Pet Force adventure. This time, they're joined by one of the most far-out artists in the entire galaxy, Fred Hembeck. And we've got Grace Randolph's Superbia number 5. Brand new arc, perfect jumping on point for new readers. It's summertime in Superbia. Dion and Jeremy take Eli and Zari on vacation as Tia attempts to rescue Batu from Mongolia, her first superhero excursion after coming out of retirement. Hector's dark magic slowly begins to take hold of Sarah as her burgeoning friendship with Hela takes her down a dark path. Eve joins Robbie as he heads to the annual superhero and weapons expo, but will Ruth's devious plan throw a wrench into the works? The superhero soap continues only in Superbia. From Dark Horse Comics, we've got Buddy Cops, One Shot, Explosions, Monsters, Beer. Dark Horse, proudly-ish, presents Buddy Cops, the classic tale of a demoted space cop and a 1970s android that hate each other and beat up evil things. Get ready to enjoy the laugh-inducing odd couple of Uranus and Taser as they take on gigantic orangutan and vegetation beasts while debating the sexualization of toasters. Monster Swat. Features a brand new cover, 24 story pages, and never before seen Buddy Cops material. We've got Buffy the Vampire Slayer Season 9, Number 19. The siphon is loose and gathering power after a brutal brawl with Buffy, Elyra, and Co. But there are bigger things, more important things. Real terror greets Buffy as soon as she returns to San Francisco where friends and family await her with troubling news. Executive produced by Joss Whedon. We've got Emily the Stranger number 2 of 3. Emily's ready to rock and roll, but to attain her dream of making the strangest, coolest tunes ever to grace a radio, she needs to learn to play with others. No easy task with five styles in the mix. There's a chance that the group can make it big if they can find a common tune. Rock and roll adventures from creator Rob Rieger. We've got Ghost number 4. The champagne is poured and the chandeliers are hung for Chicago Mayor Bobby Chambers' annual black and white ball. But Ghost, Vaughn, and Tommy are crashing the party, determined to stop the imposter before he claims another life and tears open a rift between two worlds. Kelly Sue DeConnick, Captain Marvel, brings the climactic in the final chapter of In the Smokin' Din. We've got R.I.P.D. City of the Dam number 4 of 4. Intent on bringing the City of the Dam down, R.I.P.D. officers Roy Pulsifer and Crispin Mather fight their way to the city's heart. But as its secrets unravel, so too does their partnership, creating a rift that threatens their mission and an outcome that still reverberates 100 years later. This is a prequel to the upcoming feature film starring Ryan Reynolds and Jeff Bridges in theaters July 2013. We've got Sledgehammer 44 number 1. August 1944, a man in a suit of armor drops from an American warplane into a French battlefield, where he attempts to fight his way through an army of Nazis and the massive war machine they keep protected in an armory. And we've got Star Wars number 3, Princess Leia formed a secret squadron of stealth X-Wings to help expose a spy within the rebel ranks, but taking command puts her at odds with Luke Skywalker at a time that they need solidarity more than ever, especially when the spy has alerted the Empire to Han Solo's latest venture. From the dream team of Brian Wood, Carlos Donda, and cover artist Alex Ross, perfect starting point for new readers, fan favorite Star Wars classic era characters. From Dynamite Entertainment, we've got Deja Thoris and the Green Men of Mars number 2 of 8. Things go from bad to dark, hopeless, and stomach-churningly gruesome for the Princess of Helium. She's been kidnapped by Rogue Thark Voro, a black marketeer for green men with a certain forbidden taste. When she's locked in a dungeon with other doomed red-skinned women, Deja Thoris is in for a fate that really is worse than just death. Voro's keeping the women alive and performing one amputation after another on them. Nothing but the freshest red meat for his customers. 
Next, we've got George R. R. Martin's A Game of Thrones number 13. In the aftermath of Jamie Lannister's brutal attack upon Eddard Stark and his men, King Robert meets with the wounded Eddard and presents him with the choice of evils. Either Eddard accepts the heavy mantle of the king's hand once more, or Robert will appoint Jamie to the position. Adding to the troubles of House Stark, Tyrion Lannister wins his freedom from Caitlyn Stark. Now the imp will return to his father, intent on revenge for his treatment at the hands of Cat and her mad sister. Meanwhile, far to the north, the bastard Jon Snow becomes a sworn brother of the Night's Watch and must put his loyalty to the Starks aside. We've got Jim Butcher's The Dresden Files Ghoul Goblin number 3 of 6. Harry's traveled from his home turf of Chicago to investigate a series of inexplicable murders in a small Missouri town. He's already managed to turn half the Berg against him, with the other half's motives even murkier. And that's not even taking the ghoul and goblin who both separately nearly killed him. Unfortunately, they may have succeeded in murdering the eldest of the cursed family he's trying to protect, a man who harbors his own dark secrets. It's time for Harry to seek out the help of a higher authority. Next, we've got Kevin Smith's The Bionic Man Annual Number 1, Three Words, Venus Death Probe. When a clandestine Chinese spacecraft crash lands north of Alaska, it's a race against time between China and the United States, each anxious to salvage valuable high-tech secrets, to hunt down an errant rover built to survive the greenhouse hell of the Venusian atmosphere. OSI agent Steve Austin tests the limits of his bionics as he hunts down the independent-minded machine determined to complete its mission no matter where it has landed. We've got Peter Cannon Thunderbolt number 7. In Pyramid Schemes, Peter Cannon is in Egypt where he learns some disturbing facts about the missing Princess Amaset. Meanwhile, as Thunderbolt, his plans to summon the dragon once more bring him into contact with the explosive Sons of Adam. We've got Robert Jordan's The Wheel of Time, The Eye of the World number 33. Moraine has at last delivered the Rand and the others safely to the realm of the Green Man, where the Eye of the World rests and the last battle shall take place. But they are not the only ones who have found this place. Balthamel and Agonor or two of the Forsaken have found their way there as well, and now know precisely who they're looking for. Robert Jordan's epic Wheel of Time continues here. And we've got Shadow number 10, Revolutionary Part 3 of 4. The Shadow, along with faithful sidekick and pilot Miles Crofton and new partner in adventure George Orwell, pursues the Black Sparrow across the war-torn Spanish countryside. Cranston must decide how he's going to confront the woman who is both former lover and current adversary, but there's a new player in the mix. Just who is the maniacal El Rey? The Shadow must thwart El Rey's plot to rise from the debris of a war-shattered nation and install himself as supreme ruler. From IDW Publishing, we've got Doctor Who Classics number one. Doctor Who Classics is back. The new series presents strips never before reprinted and in color for the very first time. In this inaugural issue, enjoy two complete stories featuring the seventh Doctor, Time and Tide, and Follow That TARDIS, by such luminaries as Richard Starkings, Andy Lanning, and Doogie Braithwaite. We've got Fever Ridge, A Tale of MacArthur's Jungle War number 2 of 8. Fever Ridge continues with a historical narrative analyzing the people, forces, and events that led to the desperate fight for mastery of the Pacific. We watch as the river of history flows from the 1860s to MacArthur's fight from Corregidor under personal threat of the Japanese to hang him, his wife, and four-year-old son before the eyes of the emperor. We've got Ghostbusters number two. The ghost of a notorious killer has begun to haunt New York, and the new Ghostbusters have to stop him before he can pick up where he left off. Meanwhile, the original Ghostbusters compare notes trying to figure out where they are and how to get home. We've got Highways number three of four by John Byrne. Mysteries begin to unfold as our crew learns there are plots within plots and betrayals within betrayals. And just what is the relationship between Cagney and Megan? Next, we've got Mars Attacks number 8. In a small town of Tortilla Flats, New Mexico, events are unfolding that could change the direction of the war. What the heck do a boy and former mobster have to do with it? Don't miss any of the action in this runaway hit series. We've got Rocketeer Hollywood Horror number 2 of 4. Cliff Seekert on the run, Betty in the clutches of a ghastly auto ruin, and what is PV's connection to the missing scientist? All this and more, as the Rocketeer must prevent nothing less than the wrath of the Lord himself. More pulp action in the great Dave Stevens tradition. And we've got Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Color Classics Micro Series Donatello One-Shot, a solo story following Donatello on an adventure to remember. Donatello meets a reclusive artist by the name of Kirby in his building's basement apartment. No ordinary artist, Kirby has a magic pencil that makes his drawings come to life. Before they know it, Donatello and Kirby are in over their heads and stuck in a dangerous dimension of Kirby's creating. And we've got Transformers Regeneration 1, number 89, Dinobot War, 
Happy reunion are in short supply as Grimlock seeks out his Dinobots in a desperate attempt to salvage something from the mounting carnage in Iacon. But as far as they're concerned, he's a traitor who has brought shame on the Dinobot name, and if they're going down, he's coming with them. From Image Comics, we've got change number four of four. Everything drowns. Some patients can't be saved. What if the hardest thing you ever had to do was to look yourself in the eyes? This is where it ends. We've got Darkness number 111, Wrath of the Witchblade. Jackie crafted the world as he saw fit. For the longest time, nobody noticed. As Master of the Shadows, he knows that he must operate outside of the spotlight if he wants to get what he truly wants. But there are those who know the unbalance Jackie caused. Witchblade bearer Sarah Pizzini knows what Jackie stole from her, and the time has come for her to make Jackie pay. We've got End Times of Brom and Ben number 3 of 4. Brom grows his cult following by throwing Burning Brom a 66.6-hour festival of rock, revelry, and revelations. But when Ben chooses to side with heaven, all hell breaks loose. Plus, the reveal of the true Antichrist, someone gets roofied, and a shock ending you'd least expect. We've got Hoax Hunters number 8, Haunchyville, part conclusion. Recent revelations leave the Hoax Hunters searching for answers as they confront the strange terror of Haunchyville. We've got Manhattan Projects number 10, Finite Oppenheimers, an in-depth look at the first decade of the ongoing war inside Oppenheimer's brain. How far is too far behind enemy lines when the enemy is yourself? My God, it's full of Oppenheimers. And we've got Mind the Gap number 8, Wish You Were Here Part 3. The struggle between Kate and Elle's mind is settled, and the winner still loses, as the difficult choice must be made. An uneasy alliance is formed to clear Dane's name, as Lonnie becomes an even bigger threat. Lives hang in the balance, and more than one person will find death knocking on their door. We've got Nowhere Man number 4, Everybody's on the Run. And we've got Peter Panzerfaust number 10, Paris Conclusion. The aftermath of the dangerous rescue mission leaves the group fractured and forever changes the face of the war. Major Spoilers calls it both magical and adventurous without needing the aid of pixie dust or a giant crocodile. Not saying that throwing in the croc wouldn't be awesome, though. Peter Panzerfaust is a title that you should be checking into every month, and I'm giving this issue 4 out of 5 stars. Next, we've got Spawn number 229, Complex Messiah Part 1, All New Story Arc. No longer haunted by his past, Jim Downing looks to begin a new life as a hero, a healer, a savior. But the hellborn evil in the heart of his incredible powers is growing stronger, threatening to take control. We've got Todd, the ugliest kid on earth, number three of four, Andy with Strangers, part two. Todd's new prison mentor meets out some ugly justice on the convict that stole Todd's stuff. Meanwhile, Chief Hargrave stumbles into the clutches of the maniac killer. Todd's mother tries to raise bail money the old-fashioned way, and Todd's dad learns there's a dark side to his celebrity crush. We've got Trigger Girl 6, number one. Who is the deadly assassin Trigger Girl 6, and why was she sent on a mission to kill the President of the United States? Who is behind her creation, and what is their endgame? All these questions are answered as this unforgettable epic is collected for the first time, with bonus sketch pages featuring the art of award-winning illustrator Phil Noto. Next, we've got Walking Dead number 108, Ezekiel Has a Tiger. And we've got Where is Jake Ellis number 3 of 5, chapter 8. John's back is against the wall, but Jake is by his side. The question is, what is the facility really after, and what is Dawood willing to do to get it for them? From Valiant Entertainment, we've got Archer and Armstrong number 8, Nothing is Forever, So Say the Null. The Wrath of the Eternal Warrior gears up for its universe-shattering penultimate issue. Nothing is forever, that is the motto of the Null, the enemies of the Geomancer for centuries. Now at last, the Null have found the key to the utter destruction of all that is, and his name is Obadiah Archer. Can Aram and Gilead set aside their differences long enough to team up against Armstrong's best friend, and will any of them survive the final battle? And we've got Bloodshot number 9, there's no turning back now. The man with the past he can't remember has to make one of the most difficult decisions of his life. Should he play the role of savior and unleash a force that could possibly destabilize the world, or should he settle into the role he knows best, killer, and wipe the slate clean once and for all? Full of shocks, heart-stopping action, and more backstabbing than a dozen productions of Julius Caesar. Bloodshot has his finger on the trigger, and the shot that will be heard around the Valiant Universe gets fired right here. Okay, so that's it from some of the top independent publishers this week, but there's still plenty of other books out as well, so be sure to check out my YouTube channel at He'sGotIssues.com to see both the Marvel and DC videos for this week, as well as my usual roundup of all my favorites for the week with a little more depth and insight than you get here. And if you like these videos, be sure to let me know by leaving a comment and subscribing. You can also follow He's Got Issues on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest to see everything I'm reading as I read it. So until next week, I'm John Cooney, and I've got issues.